I'm Elizabeth Hoym, and I'm an assistant professor at the School of Information Sciences. I research the history of children's literature, literacy, and reading, and I also teach fantasy and science fiction. So I research the history of children's literature over the last 300 years, very broadly, and uh, that's a very important period for children's literature because um, we changed how we're educating people over that time. So at the beginning, um, only a few families um, would learn to read and write and go to school, and a lot of other children worked and might learn in those settings. Um, but it's quite different from today, where we at least have the goal that everybody should um, go to school and learn to read and write. So children's literature itself developed as a genre during that period. And at first it was written for those um, privileged families um, who had the wealth to supply their kids with that literature and to give them a, a childhood free of of work, um, but over time it, it also expanded to you know, serve a much wider and more diverse audience of, of children. So many of the books that I investigate are not the kinds of things that you would think. So when people usually think of children's literature, they're thinking of like Little Women or Mark Twain, um, but I am more interested in the kinds of things that we forget to pay any attention to. So information literature, but also the broad um, different medias that were used with children, so like children's games. Um, visual aids in the classroom, different kinds of learning aids that were um, developed during this period to try and activate children's imagination, um, their curiosity, and um, that we're supposed to help people learn using the senses. I find that interesting because uh, we associate that kind of learning with today, but really a lot of these kinds of tactics began um, as education broadened to include a wider public. Many of the stories that are told today actually started um, 300 years ago. There, a lot of times there's these same genre patterns and same stories that get told over and over again. Um, and that can help us understand why certain kinds of stories are difficult to tell um, because we don't have as, as, we're not as practiced in them and the same kinds of genres and patterns get reworked over and over again, that means that other kinds of stories are very easy for us to tell. So we get in these ruts of telling certain kinds of stories. And I, when I you know, teach my History of Children's Literature course, for example, um, I show students examples of, say, modern day picture books or stories that are actually retellings of things that you know, are, are from two or three or 400 years back um, so that they can see how these patterns get formed.